ready to pour the concrete bond beams which are on the top. They're called bond beams because they bond everything together and they're going to give us a nice even surface to frame the, the roof and the walls. So you can see here that Gary's attaching a piece of metal plumber's tape across the bottom of the form. He's got it attached down here on this side to the outside of the form, ran it underneath, and then he's putting a screw in on this side. That keeps the forms from spreading on the, on the bottom when we pour the concrete. And then we pull the temporary block out that we put in uh, that was holding it. So that was holding the forms in place while we were building them. And then we take and add uh, screws in the redwood mud sills. And Gary's going to put one in right here. Kind of a hard spot. There we go. Now that keeps the forms from pulling out of the concrete. And you can see that we've put these screws in periodically and there's some underneath here. And that just keeps the forms, or the, uh, this mud sill is gonna stay solid. We only attached it in the top here to the uh, cleats. So once we pull these screws out and take these cleats off, then these are just gonna be in the concrete. We're putting two uh, number four, they're half inch rebars horizontally in all the bond beams. And then we're adding a little uh, tie to tie those across. And all these rebar are hung from these spreader cleats and then they just, we hang them down with a piece of bailing wire. That keeps these suspended in the concrete so that they don't just drop down and lay on the bottom of the beam where they wouldn't have any effect. We've got our uh, masonite curved around the radius at the far end there. Rebar is in, the plumber's tape is in, the cross ties, and anywhere there was kind of a larger void but not too big, we just, I put this plastic on here and stapled it, it's a good heavy visqueen. And some of the smaller cracks, the, the aggregate and the concrete, they'll just plug those up as it goes in. It, there's a concrete beam that goes over the doorway to the root cellar, and I just wrap plumber's tape around the end of it to keep that from spreading open. It's going to be where the earth tubes go, and I've got 30 inch um, cardboard sauna tubes basically that I got from Habitat. I'm going to put one end here, and it's going to go that way 15 feet. Then there'll be a five foot section at the other end, and in between where these tubes are going into the north wall of the greenhouse. This part, we're going to just use these uh, cinder blocks, fill them with concrete, and there'll be some rebar in here, and then we'll put a roof over it. You know, this will be a green roof. This is going to be underneath the terraces, and it'll allow for a nice large volume of cool air that we'll then use to pull through and create air conditioning for the greenhouse when it gets too hot. This is the window on the east wall, and we use these braces here tracing down to these gussets that we've put inside the bags with all the nails in them. And those are real solid in there, you can't pull those out. And we supported this form on these braces. And then when the wall is higher, we just use a taller brace. And uh, that keeps the forms from moving up and down. When we measured from the front beam that's going that way to, to here, it was a quarter of an inch out of, uh, you know, from being parallel. It was pretty darn close for a bunch of dirt bags. <laughs> so uh, we've scheduled a pump truck to come and pour the concrete in place because we're going to be pouring about five yards, which is a lot of concrete and we don't want to have to mix all that in a wheelbarrow. And plus it's up on top of these walls, so this way we can, you know, they'll have the boom coming down and, and we can just guide the hose where we need to put the concrete. And so we're trying to get all this ready before they come because you don't want to have to do anything um, when the concrete comes. You want to be totally ready uh, because it's going to go fast and furious. 
when you pour concrete, there's usually like a yard that gets hung up in the hoses and stuff. And so rather than just waste that, because it's a hundred bucks, we're gonna put uh, earth tubes on the north side. And the earth tubes that I have are actually cardboard sauna tubes because I got them used at um, Habitat for Humanity at their ReStore. And so they were very inexpensive compared to buying real culverts. And so in order to make it so that when the cardboard breaks down, there'll still be a tube. We're gonna put the tubes in, wrap them with plastic, and then put concrete over the top of them. So it'll actually end up being a, a concrete pipe, really. So the excess concrete will pour over those earth tubes on the north side.